The Velveteen Dream, at one point the next can't miss prospect, from the age to the character to the universal praise to everything else you could imagine. He was a 5 to a player with every box ticked and what you'd want in a top star. By all accounts, he was destined to be the next big thing in the WWE. Now he just remains a what if. In 2014, 19 year old Patrick Clark began training to become a professional wrestler. He grew up in Northeast DC and when he was just 2 years old, his dad was stabbed and killed. His dad was involved in gang related activities, so Clark was raised by only his mom and great grandmother. When his mom broke the news to him that his biological father was no longer around, he turned to wrestling as a coping mechanism. Cartoons, music, sports, they just weren't doing it, but for an 8 year old Patrick Clark, once he laid eyes on The Undertaker and Kurt Angle for the first time on SmackDown, he was hooked and he never looked back. The mid 2000s SmackDown roster was what he referred to as father figures. He became enamored with the business and he knew that this is what he wanted to do once he grew up. By 2014, Clark had been following the WWE for 11 years and it was time to make his passion a reality. After completing wrestling training and a brief time on the indies, just a few months later he submitted an audition tape to be part of the Tough Enough reboot. My name is Patrick Clark. I'm 19 years old and I was raised in the nation's capital, Washington DC. When I was just two years old, my father was killed and I knew at that exact moment that if I followed in his footsteps, I could end up just like him. Dead. The WWE saved my life by giving me the outlet that I needed to see that there's more to life than just a nine to five and that I could become bigger than my situation. For what time I have left, I want to live in my own house, sleep in my own bed. I don't want to deal in drugs, lose my ambition and wind up dead. And that's how you remember me. That's the sad part. This ring, this is my realm. I dictate my future, I set the example, and I change the mold. I get to live, live without the fear of death, and it starts here. 11,000 audition tapes were sent in, but only 14 made it to the show, and one of those 14 was Clark. For those unfamiliar, Tough Enough was a reality series produced by WWE in which wrestlers compete in various challenges, undergo wrestling training, and the winner would get a WWE contract. During Tough Enough, Patrick became a fan favorite. He let it be known that since a very young age, he had a passion for this. He studied the history, he knew his stuff, and that a lot of the other competitors were only there for fame and fortune, but for him, it was a genuine love for this business. Telling them that he was superior because the others were masquerading as wrestling fans, when in reality, they were only there for the $250,000 contract at the end. He displayed a very obvious it factor and confidence. For Patrick, he had some moments on Tough Enough which may have rubbed people the wrong way. His charisma was something you just couldn't manufacture. Patrick would nail promo challenges. In ring, he impressed judges with his bumping. Challenges related to character work he killed and he had a great physique to boot as well. But unfortunately, it was him who got the boot come week 5. Paige placed him in the bottom 3 and he was voted out due to a perceived attitude problem and cockiness. Some would say he came across too self-confident of himself. Fan perception on him was rather divided, many WWE stars were also voicing their displeasure on the controversial elimination. Coaches loved him because of a passion and understanding of the business. Mick Foley took to social media to say that they were fools to let Clark slip away. Jericho said that he wouldn't have done what Paige did, but WWE knew the talent that they had on their hands. They knew that this teenager with time and training could become something special. So they signed the 19 year old to a developmental deal where he'd now train at the performance center. He'd get promo lessons from the best coaches. He'd be guided into becoming the best superstar he could possibly be. Keep in mind he'd only been wrestling for less than a year and he took to the business like no other. Prodigy might be far fetched but he wasn't far from one. The tiny intricacies of wrestling he already had nailed down. At this time the NXT brand was taking off and gaining a cult following among some lapsed WWE fans and fans of professional wrestling in general. For Clark his first character was originally a Donald Trump supporter. He'd come out sporting t-shirts which read make America great again and then talk about how women should stay in the kitchen rather than enter wrestling rings. He continued to promote this character on social media and on different live events, but it wasn't exactly a gimmick that stuck. It never made it to TV and he ended up scrapping things and he went back to the drawing board. It was in March of 2017 where the foundations of his new character, 
the Velveteen Dream were laid out. The character was a nod to legendary pop artist Prince who had passed away a year previous. When the death happened, Clark said he didn't know much about him, but he was enamored with the love for him, his character, the way he performed, and his lifestyle, so a lot of Prince's tendencies carried over into this new creation, complete with purple aesthetic, velvet ring gear, a pompous character, and a finisher called the Purple Rainmaker, again a nod to one of Prince's most famous songs called Purple Rain. The character was described as a sexually ambiguous, gender fluid, self-absorbed diva. At first, the character seemed pretty passe and not something that would stick, but through time, he was able to make everyone a believer. Clark used this character, and he slowly fleshed everything out. From his catchy theme song to the hypnotic aesthetics and way of speaking, the character's mystique started to gain a lot of traction and he became a top star on NXT. Wrestling fans started to buzz at Clark, seemingly making something out of nothing. His promo style, unique. His ability to live the gimmick, no one else was doing this in the WWE. His flamboyance, very few could pull off. And this really reached a high point in a rivalry with Aleister Black. By the end of 2017, he found himself basically stalking Black in a feud where Dream asked Black to say his name, continuing the provocative nature of the character, a very simple premise which he was able to make work, showing that he had a very good grasp on the art of storytelling in the WWE. This was the rivalry that put him on the map. What set him apart wasn't one thing, but it was how he did multiple things well. He ticked boxes in character, mic, in-ring, and psychological work. And in many matches, Dream would put his body on the line to leave fans with memorable spots, whether it was jumping off a ladder, wearing a memorable costume, making a larger-than-life entrance fit for a stage like WrestleMania, or something bigger like putting Call Me Up Vince on his tights to set social media ablaze. We all believe this was in reference to Vince McMahon, but apparently it was for one of his friends. Point is, by late 2018, he had made waves on the brand as one of the most distinguishable characters and fans started to get behind the now only 22 year old. He became something truly special. Fans were looking at the prospect of future world titles, character driven rivalries, how he'd adapt his character in the future. Being so young, the investment and excitement on him was through the roof. Add to that that he was personally being trained by one of the greatest of all time in Shawn Michaels. He was the passion project for NXT, the label of the next one was on him and the lights were shining bright. From his extraordinary gift of gab, endlessly athletic moveset, great physique and undeniable aura, to his ability to tell stories and his charisma oozing from basically everywhere. The flamboyant character made waves which were being heard outside of NXT. So much so that it caught the attention of stars such as Edge, Kevin Owens, of course Triple H who was behind the NXT operation, and most notably John Cena. In 2018, John Cena simply labeled the Velveteen Dream as the one, saying that he just knew that he was destined for something special because of a gut instinct. If that wasn't enough, in his third year of competition, he was able to impress WWE Hall of Famer Edge who on his podcast with Christian said this, I hadn't seen much of Velveteen Dream but I watched him and Aleister Black. That kid's been working three years. For three years to be where he's at is incredible. He's gonna be a player, it was really fun to watch. It was a fun match and I thought there were a lot of cool false finishes and like I said, three years in or whatever, he's going to be a good one. Kevin Owens said that I think plenty of people will be saying your name for years to come at Velveteen Dream. Sheamus gave him high praise saying that his character was going to be something to watch. He was taking the company by storm. At a very young age, he was being touted as an heir apparent and, by all accounts, the next one. A special gimmick, the perfect man to play this character, him living the gimmick and a winning formula, things were going great. He from the onset handcrafted this character and he had a national platform to put his skills on full display. He won the World's Collide Tournament which resulted in him capturing the North American Championship, did some great work with that championship, had some great matches and rivalries and he continued to refine and perfect his character. By the end of 2019, he dropped the championship, took some time off to recover from a back injury he'd been suffering from, and in February of 2020, Dream returned from his back injury, and following NXT TakeOver Portland, he was positioned to get revenge on the same group who cost him the North American Championship, the Undisputed Era. 
but this time for Adam Cole's NXT Championship headed into TakeOver Tampa Bay WrestleMania 36 weekend. But this is where things took a drastic turn. He was about to be crowned as the face of the brand in 2020, but COVID shut everything down. But that wasn't the worst thing that was about to happen. Clark's dream was about to become a nightmare. On April 20th, 2020, a Reddit user on the Squared Circle forum posted accusations that Patrick Clark had sent explicit content to a minor. There were screenshots as well as voice recordings sent from Clark's verified Instagram account. The person on the other end was apparently 17 years old, and the user seeked advice on what to do from the online community. The person said these messages were coming from Clark's personal account, which were of a sexual nature and also going to their friends who were 15 and 16 years old. The person alleged that Clark blocked them once they refused to send a nude photo back in response to the one he sent. Proof was attached to the Reddit thread and this blew up on social media and in the wrestling community. Clark took to social media to address these allegations by saying, Be assured I did not communicate inappropriately with anyone. A private photo of mine was shared without my consent or knowledge. I am working with a third party to look into this matter. Basically, he said he was hacked. Quickly, I think it is important to remember that in today's day and age, some people just want blood. The only people who know if that's true or not is Patrick Clark and the accusers. WWE didn't address this matter publicly. He lost to Adam Cole at TakeOver In Your House before disappearing for a while. In June 2020, Clark again made national headlines for all the wrong reasons. After new allegations were made that he sent a sexually explicit photo to an underage boy, and was also accused of grooming during the Speaking Out movement. The Speaking Out movement was a period in June of 2020 where many wrestlers came out and gave their stories on emotional, physical, and mental harm that they've suffered in the wrestling business. The hashtag trended and shed a light on many wrestlers' inappropriate behavior to others. Josh Fuller is an independent wrestler who took to social media to start a thread of messages between him and Clark. He posted pictures and he said there was no doubt in his mind that Clark was a groomer and child predator. The situation took a completely new turn. The post by Fuller indicated that Clark asked him to show his full body on video chat. A lot of evidence was posted including nude photos, call logs, chats, sexual messages sent from Clark's social media, including a tweet that was seen and confirmed by many that said, Josh Fuller, call me back. It seemed odd at the time, but it linked back to, well, Josh Fuller. From May to August of 2020, Clark was off TV with many speculating that the company was conducting an internal investigation. He returned on the August 12th, 2020 episode of NXT and the company clearly had creative plans for him. But during every appearance, the hashtag Fire Velveteen Dream trended in the wrestling community and on Twitter. Triple H had an interview with CBS Sports talking about how the company completed a private investigation and they found nothing. That Clark was only pulled from TV because of injuries sustained in a car crash. And that car crash story is true. However, Fuller said that nor he nor any other accusers were contacted during the supposed investigation. Evidence unfortunately didn't matter in the eyes of many fans. The controversy had tainted his name. They only focused on the vile accusations and immediately demanded Clark's termination. Regardless of if he sent the messages and photos or not, the court of online opinion was just too powerful. They continued to employ him in hopes that the heat would die down and even keep him in the mid card but it didn't. He had his final match in December of 2020 against Adam Cole. He was kept off WWE TV until his release in May of 2021 as the company snuck him into a slew of WWE releases, and many believe that the company released him later on to steer away from the obvious in their findings, and this was his own belief as well. Following his release, Clark put out a lengthy statement on Instagram. He first addressed the accusations saying that they did in fact derail all his momentum which eventually led to his firing. He then addressed one of the accusers, Jacob Clark. He said that he kept his messages open for people who were aspiring to get into wrestling. 17 year old Jacob asked him for wrestling advice. He said that he offered Jacob advice on working on his physique and promo skills. He said that Jacob was worried that he wasn't actually talking to the real Patrick Clark, so he sent a voice message in character to keep kayfabe, asking him about his details like height, weight, trainers, and what school he went to, saying that he continued to answer his questions until he politely wrapped up the conversation, and then he went on to add that Jacob created screenshots of a conversation that never happened between the two. He then addressed Joshua Fuller who said that Clark was a child groomer. He said that he did in fact know Josh. After his time in Tough Enough, the two became friends because of a mutual trainer. They became friends in 2016, 
but he said the friendship ended because Fuller didn't seek medical attention for a concussion. He said that he didn't want Fuller to be unhealthy, so to have him accuse me of predatory behavior because I chose not to help was spiteful. He also added that there were inconsistencies in Josh's stories and that both Josh and Jacob were two of many people that he helped, but these were the only two who found him to be malicious and predatory, saying that there was also a public forum where people are buying and selling explicit photos of multiple wrestlers which hasn't been shut down. Clark shut down all the accusations from his end and he called the comments defamatory and premeditated for him to get his release. Six months after his release, Patrick Clark got arrested in November of 2021. The officer who arrested Clark all in all said he did cocaine right in front of his face. The police report said that he was pulled over because he had no lights on at night, but the officer instead found a pipe and baggie which contained cocaine which Clark then proceeded to snort so he could conceal the evidence. He also tried to hide the baggie in the console of the car because he knew that he was about to get in trouble, but when he tried to hide it, the cocaine spilt over into the driver's side seat, and Clark also admitted that, yeah, he did do cocaine right in front of the officer once the officer read him his rights. The reason given for his original termination from NXT was because of an incident that occurred with another talent who went to management and reported on it, as well as a supposed behavioral issue. The incident in question seems to have come to light. EC3, who was another one of NXT's most popular performers at the time, had a house party. He and Clark weren't the greatest of friends, but through a mutual, Clark attended this party and he left his phone in EC3's washroom trying to record people urinating on video. Here's what EC3 had to say. Uh, in NXT, there was always, you know, some speculation about him being a little bit off, but you know, you welcome that and you could be friends. and. We had a party and it was at my place and, you know, he came over because I'm being friendly and I'm, you know, top guy and I try to welcome everybody into a thing. And he uh, left his phone in my bathroom with the camera on trying to capture people taking pisses. I'm not going to lie to you too, this was a late evening of partying, so maybe there were a few cocktails shared. Who knows what everyone else was on? Because as we know, <laughs> he just, he'll do in front of a cop. Lord only knows what he'd do behind a cop's back. Did you so what I did was... I took the phone, I stopped the recording, I made sure the PP video of my wee wee was deleted. Very nice. Because that was happening in my in my home, by the way. So delete, put it back, turn it back on so it didn't look like somebody, you know, so it looked like the, the it was still happening, haha, you right. know, the big elaborate ruse. I walk out of my own bathroom, because this is where I live. I sit on the couch and I go and I wait. And he goes right back to the bathroom. And I go back in right after that. Phone's gone. I'm like, I can't believe this. But now oh. here's a Clark responded to this story on an Instagram live saying that it's not true that they were under substance. Also that because of the provocative nature of his character that he played on TV, EC3 wanted to confirm his sexuality saying that I tried to record you in your bathroom. Let's be honest, Mike. You're leaving out a lot of details. What were we doing that night, Mike? What type of powder was on the table, Mike? Okay. Okay, let's be real. So let's not leave out all the details. We were all drunk. You were pissy drunk because you were in your place. You were damn near passed out in the corner. You and your homegirl, whichever chick you were screwing at the time. I left my phone on your bathroom counter and because you were not sure of my sexuality at the time because of the character I played on TV and because we're not friends in real life at all, okay? You try to accuse me of recording you in your own home. So what did I do? I went to our mutual friend who no longer works for the WWA former NXT talent and I showed him my phone and had him go through my photos and videos and my recently deleted just to prove to you and the other person that was there who, because I respect him and he has a job, okay? I'm not going to put him out there, okay? I had him prove to you that I was not recording you. Cocaine is a hell of a drug, EC3. 
To which EC3 again retorted, In life, I forgive everyone for everything that's been done to me. I personally have never failed a drug test from any employer, nor been arrested for drug usage, paraphernalia, assault, battery, or any other inappropriate behavior. My forgiveness includes Patrick Clark for setting up a video recording device in the bathroom of my home. As far as any other accusations and allegations against him, I hope he finds the help he needs. And again, he said that WWE employees basically came up to him and thanked him for revealing the bathroom story because it basically assured that Dream would never return to the company. Since his release, his personal demons have become a concern and he's landed himself into more trouble. First, the cocaine incident as mentioned, Clark was again arrested on August 20th, 2022 for biting a gym employee. According to a police report, the gym was closed for cleaning and Clark was asked to leave the facility. He refused to do so and got into a fight with the employee, also giving him death threats. When a fight broke out, he bit the employee under the armpit close to the chest area. Police observed teeth marks on the gym employee and arrested Clark for battery and trespassing. Less than a week later, on August 26th, he was arrested for violating probation. That's three arrests in less than a year. The week before, he was pushing for a WWE comeback, posting photos of himself and writing don't dream it, be it with the hashtag bring back Velveteen Dream. As Triple H was now in charge of WWE creative and bringing back many of his favorites, maybe he thought this was a shot to return. Behavioral issues have been talked about a lot from various news sources and online publications. They've made it clear that during his entire WWE tenure, this was almost always an issue. His many altercations haven't helped his cause. In the lead up to the original firing in 2021, there were many instances involving WWE superstars which seemed to throw shade Clark's way. Before NXT TakeOver 30, Triple H had a conference call and he talked about his immaturity and how it bleeds into his personal life. Triple H himself knew that Dream was the one standing in his own way. At one point, Finn Balor posted a photo with a trash bag over Dream's head. It was retweeted by Dakota Kai. Rhea Ripley liked and later went on to unlike a photo with a Fire Velveteen Dream sign in the Thunderdome. Nia Jax liked a tweet of a fan saying answer the phone dream when WWE was releasing talent. Also there was a photo posted by the user named Daily Accolade saying that the investigation found nothing. Jax replied with clown emojis. All of these talents were down in NXT at one point or another and a lot of these instances seemed to show that there was ill will to dream and that he wasn't the most liked guy backstage. There was also the red flag of him staying on NXT for quite a long time. Following his release, there's been a lot made of Clark's immaturity. Rob Schamberger is an artist who's done a ton of fantastic work for the WWE. He said that without saying anything further, that Dream was the single most unprofessional person in the business, saying that he hopes it's the wake up call he needs to start doing the emotional work to become a better person. Dream has denied being hard to work with. In an interview with Dishing Drama, he said, in my time with the company, I've taken that time very serious. If you worked with me and I have worked with a lot of people, whether they'd like to admit it or not, I have worked with a lot of people that walk through the doors of the company. From 2016 to my departure, the week before I got released, I was in there training with new talent, so I'm sure that someone has taken offense to the way that I do my job. But as the audience can see, I did my job well and it was for great reason. It was to entertain and to engage, so I wouldn't be surprised if someone had something to say. He also said that he was backstage on Raw during the height of COVID a few weeks before his release and he refused to shake people's hand which may have rubbed many the wrong way. His image is forever tainted and a return to wrestling seems highly unlikely with more than just accusations surrounding him. He at one point had the world at his fingertips. At such a young age, the Velveteen Dream had earmarkings of a mainstream star. He looked like he was having the time of his life doing what he always wanted to do. But just as quickly as things began, the accusations of 2020, followed by him getting into a ton of legal trouble, have all but confirmed that he won't be back in a large scale wrestling company anytime soon. It's such a shame to see a guy who had it all, someone who was adored by wrestlers, wrestling fans, journalists, and simply a student of the game fall so far. At the same time, it's also sad to see how allegations can spiral into something so much worse. For Patrick Clark, this is an unprecedented fall from grace. This man, by many accounts, was simply supposed to be the one, the guy, the next top star, or at worst, one of the next top stars in the WWE. A ceiling which was so high, legends were almost guaranteeing success. Wrestling fans were buzzing, everyone was excited, all gone in the snap of a finger, just like that.